What if just beyond this season of turmoil is your best season yet? Kevin Wallace dives into how God can turn any season into a time of blessing in his new book, After This. It's available now to order. Receive your copy today by visiting www.kevinwallace.tv. Stand firm and believe there is an After This. Hey family, Kevin Wallace here from Redemption to the Nations Church. I've got a message for you today that I believe God gave me to bring strength and hope and joy to your journey. I want you to get your heart open. I want you to get ready to receive this word. I don't believe your life's ever gonna be the same again. God's getting ready to take you to a new level. I'll see you at the end of this message and we'll pray together. God bless, enjoy this word. Second Corinthians nine. I preached from this several weeks ago, so I'm a bit, I was almost ashamed to take the text, except that's the one God gave me. So if you don't like to hear it from the same text two times in two months, I do not apologize. Because the word of the Lord is good whenever we hear it. Verse 6, look at somebody, tell them, neighbor, we're still making room. And tell them today we're going to make room in our giving. Oh, yeah. Feel that quench come up real quick? People got all tight. I'm not just going to talk about money today because I'm going to tell you right now, God has made you far more of a resource than simply dollars. If you think the only thing you can give to get God's attention is money, you have missed the entire principle of the kingdom of God. And you have, you have misunderstood your potency as a resource. If God can get resources through you, he'll get them to you. We always preach that and say, if God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. And we think about money, but I'm going to tell you, if God can get mercy through you, he'll get mercy to you. If God can get joy through you, he'll get joy to you. If you quit looking at your life as the destination and start seeing your life as a coupling between heaven and earth and that God will let things flow through your life if he can trust you to be a steward and give it away. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, when you have it, say amen. And then put your finger over there, please, on Matthew chapter 5. But this I say, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, but this I say... He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. How many know that's a kingdom principle? So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God, and God is able to make all grace, somebody say all grace, abound toward you somebody say me Me. that you always somebody say always Always. having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every what I need you to underline good work right there and we're coming back to it in a moment you're gonna have abundance in every good work You are going to have abundance, sir, in every good work. Ma'am, you are going to be abundant so that you can fulfill every good work. As it is written, he dispersed abroad and given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower, everybody got a... Bible like mine, how many know he is capitalized? Because God is the one that supplies seed for the sower. Watch this. This is how good God is. He gives seed to the sower. He gives bread for food because how many know we all get hungry? Y'all are quiet in here on the Christmas Sunday. I said, how many know we all get hungry? And then he does something amazing. He supplies seed you've sown and multiplies the seed you've sown and increases the fruit of your righteousness and you'll be enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God 
Skip to verse 15, Chad. Let me expedite this message this morning. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. How many know we love to give, but nobody could ever outgive God? Now I want you to go back here and look at Matthew 5, please. Matthew 5. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Verse number 14. You are the light of the world. Can I say something? If the world is dark, it's not because the world is dark. The world is dark because people who have the light haven't turned it on yet. Oh, this is going to be interesting. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do they put a lamp, light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may what? See what? See what? your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven flip back real quick let me tie this together and we're going to teach for a minute and then I'm going to see my wife and spend time with her and believe that on my way home she's going to be healed look at verse 8 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 I'm going to remind you you having God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you having always having sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every what and jesus said men will see your and do what glorify your father which is in heaven father help us to see how giving makes room for you i pray in jesus name you'll anoint me to teach and preach for these next few moments i pray that the spirit of the Grinch would be run out of this house that stingy Christians would come up under conviction and they would find themselves in a revelation of abundance and father I'm not just talking about abundance of materialism I'm talking about an abundance of love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness let a revelation of abundance jump on this house today and let people who feel like they're broke recognize that they're loaded, they're overflowing, that, that you didn't just come to fill it to the brim, you came to let their cup run over today. Let a spirit of abundance break out in this house. Somebody just thank him for it right now. Let a spirit of abundance break out in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We are, we are in 100 Preparation, I should say, for 100 days to glory. By the way, I think this is amazing. Jen sent me an update last night. We already have over 170 churches that are partnering with our church. Come on, let's give God thanks for that. That's amazing. 170 different churches that are partnering with our church for 100 days to glory. And I've given you those four pillars for the last couple of weeks. We're going to give God 100 minutes of prayer a week. It's 12 to 15 minutes a day. 100 minutes in the Word a week. It's 12 to 15 minutes of time in the Word every day. And then 100 days, these first 100 days of 2022, 100 days of consecration or fasting, something that we will give to God for those 100 days, an item of food, a kind of food, whatever it might be. And then this is what I want to kind of target and, and, and look at today, 100 days of generosity and random acts of kindness. I want to make sure that this house understands that you can never be deeper spiritually than you are in our than we are in our generosity. You can never be deeper spiritually and, and I say that because I see a lot of revival movements with a lot of stingy people. 
And it's almost as if the destination and the, and the goal of revival is personal fulfillment when the reality, true revival, is when we get in such a way that we recognize the kingdom ain't even about us anymore. It's about serving and blessing and releasing blessing to others. And if we're really people of revival who've been revived and we're living in the flow of the river of God, you can't just be a reservoir, you have to be a resource. God, God doesn't just pour things into your life and mine as, as a destination and an, and, and, a, and an end all. He pours it into us because he trusts that we have the revelation of generosity within us. The law of sowing and reaping is active in our lives. We are releasers. We are not just keepers, we are releasers. If we experience the goodness of God but do not share the goodness of God, Um, The world remains in darkness. There is is this partnership between heaven and earth that must happen. God trusts the church to be stewards of the kingdom and the blessing of, of living in the kingdom. There is no plan B. If the church doesn't do the job, there is no other option. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. I am the light of the world. If the church isn't the light of the world, it's not like he can run down the road and get another group of people. We are the people of God. We are children of the light. We are citizens of the kingdom. And Jesus tells us in Matthew's gospel, the fifth chapter, that you are the light of the world. You don't have to have a title to be the light of the world. You don't have to have a badge to be the light of the world. In fact, you may not even want the responsibility of being the light of the world. But it is not an option. You don't get to choose none of the above. You and I are the light of the world. And Jesus is very clear, as are the apostles of the New Testament, that the world sits in darkness. That the system of this world is a demented dark system. That Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He wants to sink his fangs into every every area of culture and society. And he wants to twist and dement. He wants to disintegrate. He wants to to break apart. He He wants to destroy. He wants to kill. That's the agenda of the enemy. And the only thing holding the enemy back from destroying this planet are the righteous, the redeemed, the blood washed who are living on an assignment and refuse to allow the devil and witches and warlocks to rule and to reign. My Bible said greater is he that is living inside of us than the one that is living in this world. God, I feel like preaching in here been up all night long and I came to tell you the devil is still under my feet and I want to preach in this place today that the king of glory is not just going to give us victory he's already given us victory we are operating from victory we have been given a commission to go into all the world preach the gospel cast out devils tread on serpents heal the sick raise the dead if God be for us who can be against us You're the light of the world. Now we Christians have got to quit complaining about how dark it is and turn some light on. We got to stop agreeing with the darkness and saying the problem is not that the darkness is dark. The problem is that we've got the solution and haven't flipped the switch yet. Can somebody tell them flip the switch? Turn the light on. He said you're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Time to shake and shine. You're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt is no good in a shaker. Shake the salt out. Put some salt on the steak. It tastes better. Shake the grace out of your life. Don't keep it inside. Shake and shine. Turn the light on. Put some flavor in this jacked up world. You are the light of the world. You are the solution. I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ can... You and I have to be careful that we don't let church hurt make us think that the church is the problem. I'm going to preach a sermon series somewhere next year about church hurt. Because people don't go to church. There's some people watching me. You are five blocks away from this building but won't come in. 
And the reason you won't come in is because you and Jesus got your own thing going. And I understand that some messed up people in the church hurt your feelings and hurt your life and wounded you deeply. But I'm going to tell you right now, the church is not the problem. People in the church might have been a problem, but the church of the living God is not the problem. And there are people in the church that need the grace that God put in you. They need the gift that God put in you. They need the smile that God put in you. And you can't contribute what you're supposed to contribute while you're not in the building there oh god i don't even i've been talking to people for the last few weeks about this whole movement of deconstruction i'm deconstructing my faith you better be careful people trying to talk you out of believing that you don't need a local church to be a part of well i got god and that's all i need that's not what your bible teaches the Bible said in Hebrews 10, don't, don't disconnect from brothers and sisters as you see the day of the Lord approaching. In fact, if we ever needed to be together, it's more right now than it's ever been. We are the light of the world. The church is not the problem. There may be people in the church that are a problem, but let God deal with the people in the church who are a problem. Be careful that you don't put your mouth on his bride. You need the church. And the church is never you by yourself. The church is always referred to as plural. Say, we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. And the solution is in this house. The solution is down the road at the Lutheran church. The solution is down the road inside the Missionary Baptist church. I'm telling you right now, the people of God who've been brought out of darkness into his marvelous light, we are not the problem. What is in us, and rather should I say who is in us, is the solution. We have this treasure in an earthen vessel. But my concern for us is that while we possess the treasure and we have been given the grace, my concern for us is that we do not understand the revelation of making room for God by being a generous people and continually giving it away. It's almost like when God blesses us, we're afraid he don't have no more to give. Have y'all, do y'all have some children? I got some children. When my sons are hungry, they eat like somebody's about to steal their food. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You could be sitting down in a nice restaurant and it's coming out there. I mean, just. I said, ho, 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 ho. This is going to cost some money. Can you at least enjoy the bite? And then I always say this, ain't nobody going to take your food. We're not here to take your food. It's almost in the kingdom of God like we get something from heaven and then we're so nervous that God doesn't have more to give that we hold on to it. And I just want to remind you as we run toward 2022 that generosity of heart is how you keep making room for more of God. If you make a place by being generous, God will keep filling the place you have made through your generosity. That applies to everything in your life. You ready for this? How many have been a recipient of mercy? Okay, all the people that didn't raise your hands. Slap them, make sure they're awake. Let me ask the question again. How many of us have been a recipient of mercy? Do you know what the Bible says about mercy? If you want it, give it. If you want to experience mercy, be a giver of mercy. The quickest way to dry up the river of mercy in your life is to cut it off from touching somebody else's life. The quickest way to cut off joy in your life is to cease to be a source of joy for others. The quickest way to dry up resources financially in your life is to hoard all that God blesses you with. It'd be so easy for me to make this about just about tithing and giving, but it is so much more than that. I will say this to you. There are people who every time, without fail, every time somebody teaches or preaches a sermon on tithing, 
they always shoot up with tithing is under the law and I'm under grace. I'm so glad if you are in this building that God has anointed me to fix you today. <laughs> tithing is not law. I'm, I'm kidding. Y'all smile. I got red on. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Christmas joy, okay? Tithing is not law. Tithing is grace. Tithing was enacted hundreds of years before the law was given. Why? Because tithing is not about what I have to do, Abraham would tell you. Tithing is about a covenant with a man who made a way where there was no way. Abraham knew that the blessing on his life was not the product of himself. It was the product of a covenant with a priest like Melchizedek. And the Bible said that we have been given a greater covenant. We have stepped into a greater blessing. And if Abraham could tithe to a man like Melchizedek the saints who've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb ought not have to be begged to give back to the God who gave to them but if you don't make room for God if you don't make room for God you won't get more of God so I read 2 Corinthians Because Paul starts out talking about their gift to another church and how their gift that they gave, listen very carefully, the gift that they gave caused the church of Philippi to give praise to God. One church was broke, another church that was almost just as broke, decided we're gonna take an offering for our friends down the road. So they take an offering for their friends down the road and they take the gift and now they're getting ready to give it to the church that's hurting. And Paul tells that church at Corinth, your gift to your friends down the road will cause your friends to give thanks to God. Listen, I'm believing that the message God gave me today is ministering strength to you, bringing hope for your tomorrow. And if this message and the ministry that God's given us is bringing life to you in any way, I'd love for you to consider praying, partnering with Kevin Wallace Ministries, helping us to bring this good news of Jesus Christ to even more people around this country and around this world. If you'd like more information about what we're doing, how you can be a part of it, go to kevinwallace.tv check it out today. You'll also find a place there where you can leave us your prayer request. And our team and I are going to take your prayer request to God. Pray earnestly for God to turn your situation all the way around. I love you. I thank God for all of our partners and those who are about to join the partnership. Let's see what God's going to do together in our future. Can't wait. God bless. Taking notes, write this down. Number one, your generosity makes room for other people to encounter God. I'm getting ready to blow your mind. Go back to Matthew chapter five. We're teaching here. We're teaching. Come on, let's go. Matthew chapter five. Put that verse up there, Chad, that said, uh, men will see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Now, let me get a couple things straight real quick right here. Y'all gonna get out before 12 a.m. today, 12 p.m. today. That chicken ain't even going to be ready down there. Some of y'all felt something y'all ain't felt all year long right then. I saw you get quick and look at God. Hmm. My, my. Watch this. Jesus says, men will see your good works. And you say, I ain't got no money. I ain't got nothing to give. Oh, yeah, you do. Go back to 2 Corinthians 9. Go back there. Put your finger on Matthew 5. Go back to 2 Corinthians 9, and let me remind you of what God said. You, having all ways, all sufficiency in all things, may have abundance for every good work. Well, I don't have nothing. Stop saying that. 
Citizens of the kingdom never have a desire to be a giver and not have the seed to accommodate the desire to give. If you're a citizen of the kingdom and you've got the right heart, God has the ability to hook you up with an abundance so that you never get to a moment where a good work is needed and you don't have what it takes to meet the need. Look at somebody tell them abundance, abundance, abundance. I I sincerely believe that if you and I will tap into this idea of God's abundance, that there'll never be an opportunity presented to us in this house or to us personally that we do not have in our heart or in our bank account or whatever it is we need. We will have the opportunity to give because the God we are connected to is not a God with an empty hand. He's a God of overflowing and he'll make sure sure we have the seed to meet the need so now go back to Matthew chapter 5 let your light shine before men that they may see uh oh they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven now you say pastor I I I don't want anybody to know what I'm doing that is how you should live Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Let me show you what I felt like the Lord whispered to me as I was preparing for this this week. If you give to get the glory, you missed your assignment. Read the text. The glory goes to God. Men will see your goodness, but will bring glory to God. You got to be real careful that you don't give something to get the glory. Y'all missing what I'm saying? If you give it to get the glory, you took God's seat and sat down in it. The reason we give is to demonstrate goodness. And when we demonstrate goodness, God gets the glory. Random, people have said this way before us, but random acts of kindness. How many have ever been a recipient of a random act of kindness? Okay, I told you my story a couple months ago. Sitting there at the Starbucks, got me my macchiato, something, ice and stuff. You know, let me get this off my chest. Coffee used to have to be hot. Now people actually get it with ice. What a world. (laughs) So I get my coffee. I go up there to get my little $6 coffee. And the woman in front of me paid for my coffee. What Jubilee broke out in my car. I mean, I started giving God praise. Fulfilled, 2 Corinthians 9. Look what the Lord has done. I mean, I'm giving God praise. Woo, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. So the Sunday following, I thought, I'm going to do something kind. I'm going to bless the person behind me. Let me get them a $6 cup of coffee. (laughs) Except I didn't know (laughs) that the ghetto sled pulled up. (laughs) There were 15 people in the car. All of them wanted a kabata sandwich. Everybody wanted their favorite macchiato. The bill was astronomical. I said, my God, who spent $40 at Starbucks? I don't know what they did, but I hope they gave God praise. Because I had to pray through all the way to church that morning. It took my joy. Here's my point. We need to do something in this city to reverse all this anger. We need to do something in this community to reverse all this hate. And we can shun down, fall in the floor, roll and decree and declare, pull down strongholds, cast out devils. But if we don't start demonstrating the heart of God, people who are in darkness are never going to see the love of God through the people of God. Somebody got to love this city enough and love people enough to say, I'm going to be a person that makes room for God in somebody else's life. 
We got to be the light of the world. We're a city set on a hill. When we, listen, the team will tell you, when we rent a place, we just did this big Christmas outreach. Pastor Gary, I don't know if he's here this morning. He's probably out in Kentucky cutting down a tree or something right now. I go into the Christmas share. There are hundreds of you that are all decked out and giving gift. We, we blessed over 2,000 children for your generosity. Come on, somebody. We blessed hundreds of families. The smiles that came on people's faces. People who ain't even saved and don't even go to this church walking through our toy store that your financial investment created. Mama's crying. People I don't even know walking up hugging me saying, I'm going to see you. You might even be in here right now. I'm going to see you one of these Sundays. I'm coming to church. I've been, I've been, I used to walk with God. One of the mamas told me. I'm standing there listening to this woman testify. She said, I used to go to church, but I got hurt. And, and, and y'all just love people so well. I'm going to come down there and see you sometime. I said, come on, baby. Your good works carve out a place for God in other people's lives. It's even connected to your fasting and prayer. Isaiah chapter 58 said, this is the fast that I've chosen for you, thus saith the Lord. To loose the bonds of the wicked, to feed the hungry. I'm going to tell you right now, you will be challenged during those first 100 days. You will be challenged by my wife and I to go on a fast one day and take your lunch money and go find somebody standing on the corner of a street begging for food and take them a fish sandwich and some french fries. Well, I don't know what they're going to do with that. They might, not, they might go get some crack with that money. Yeah, but they might go feed their kids with that money. Why don't you quit trying to judge somebody and just be generous and let God take care of the rest? There are times God helps and blesses us. There are times when God does things for me that I know I didn't deserve. And I ask God, what in the world? When have I ever done anything to, to even remotely approach getting, get, getting in a position to be blessed like this? And the Lord will remind me of the times when I was 19, 20, 21 years old on a fast. And instead of eating lunch, I would go take lunch to somebody standing on the side of the road. He said, Kevin, when you did it to the least of them, you did it unto me. Somebody in here has got to go. If you really want to be deep test your generosity that'll tell you how deep you are so so Jesus says you do the good works leave the glory to me let me get the glory you do the good works and through your good works you are carving out a place for somebody to encounter the goodness of God now, God is good. God is good, but his children have to protect his reputation. You say, Pastor, I don't agree with that. Nobody has to protect God's reputation. What I mean by that is you are the only ambassadors of heaven that some people will ever see. And when they leave and disconnect from our lives and the imprint of our life is left on their heart, what kind of encounter with God have we produced in the lives of other people? Do they know his love because they have encountered it through us? Or are we just another mad Christian? So your, watch this, your room makes, your gift makes room for others. And then there's a scripture over in Proverbs that says your gift makes room for you. A man's gift makes room for them. Now, how many were growing up like me and we were always told that's a spiritual gift? You know, like if you can preach, your gift will make room for you. That's why I always was taught that, but that's not what that word gift means. That word gift is an endowment. I lost everybody right there. Like, whoo, I, I thought my singing voice made room for me. No, your generosity makes room for you. What rooms have you not been able to enter 
because your spirit hadn't gotten the revelation of release yet. What if God wanted to put you in some rooms you didn't deserve? A spirit of release where you can sow and God said, oh, I can trust him. I can trust her. She knows what to do with that seed. And uh, please hear me. I am talking about financial resources, but I'm not only talking about financial resources because some of you are wealthy in mercy, love, peace. You're wealthy in smiles. You ever been around those people? They smile. They just overall happy. And they make you happy. Okay, so some of y'all are like, I don't know nobody like that. You ever met around, been around some people that were nasty attitude? And you had to disconnect because you felt your toxicity rising? You wasn't even hateful, but got around somebody hateful. You're like, man, I gotta, I gotta get out of this room. I can't stay in this room with these hateful people. You actually sow more seed throughout your day than you recognize. You're actually distributing seed into people's life when you don't even know it. Your gift will make room for you. God is about to make room for you in some places you've never been in before. But it will be because he trusts you to be a steward in those rooms and to sow well and to demonstrate good works. Now, some of y'all can't handle this today because I'm not breathing fire and speaking in nine tongues. And you're like, this ain't, my, my, I picked this Sunday. This is not heavy. He, oh, he need to walk. I'm walking real heavy right now. Enough with the Christianity where we don't demonstrate the kingdom of God. If it was powerful enough to make you fall out in the floor, it ought to be powerful enough to help you smile in adversity and help somebody else overcome. So your gift and your generosity of life will make room for people to encounter God. They will see your good works and glorify your Father. Your gift will make room for you. And this is what Paul is talking about in 2 Corinthians 9. He's talking about how the gifts of the people of God actually create an experience for other people to in encounter the grace of God themselves. But before I close, I must remind you that the gift giving did not start with you and I. Generosity was not your or my original idea. Before God ever expected generosity out of us, he demonstra demonstrated generosity to us. And Paul spends the whole ninth chapter talking about how we give and what our giving does for others. But he cannot close the story until he reminds us that it wasn't my gift that made the difference the most. It wasn't your gift that made the difference the most. Oh no, it was God that gave the greatest gift that had ever been given. And that is why Paul ends the entire thing by saying thanks be to God for his in this indescribable gift. Oh my God, I feel like preaching about Jesus on the Sunday before Christmas. Can I tell you that when the earth was full of hopelessness, when the earth was full of darkness, when hearts were broken, when men, when men were full of sin and sat in their own gloom and they had no hope of tomorrow, God went over to a tree called Calvary, got out a package named Jesus, wrapped it in the thing called flesh put it in the womb of a girl named Mary and the night he was born angels stepped in to the choir loft and said glory glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill to all men I just came today to thank God for the indescribable unexpressible out of this world gift who is the son of the living God when God wanted to save humanity Buddha couldn't save us when God wanted to save humanity Allah couldn't get the job done you can lick on a crystal till your tongue falls off and you never find eternal life Ooh, but I want to thank God for the indescribable gift 
of the man Christ Jesus. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the healer of my body, the deliverer of my mind, the bridge over troubled water, way maker when there seemed to be no way. Slap your neighbor, tell a neighbor, open the gift. Open the gift. If you open the gift, you'll find joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you open the gift, you'll find a man that can touch your mind and deliver your family. If you open the gift, he'll break the yoke and lift the burden. Somebody say, open the gift. Hallelujah. The reason there's so little joy in the church is because we've been opening every other gift. But this morning I came to open up the gift that is Jesus. I came to tell you about a man that'll give you peace that passes understanding, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Somebody shout open up the gift. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to preach. I don't know if it's going to bless y'all like it blessed me. If it don't, it's all right with me. My soul already been blessed this morning. A couple weeks ago. Ooh. Tune me up. Hallelujah. A couple of weeks ago, I ordered a gift for my wife. Yes. And they said, do you want to opt in to text messages to receive updates about your gift? I said, yes, I would. So when I said yes, about an hour later, they sent me a text. And the text said, your order is being processed. I came this morning to tell somebody who's been putting orders into heaven. You've been making petitions known to heaven. You've been praying about some stuff. You've been talking to God about some stuff. Slap three people, tell your neighbors. Say, hey, neighbor. Tell them your order is being processed. Yes, I feel like God told me to tell somebody on this Sunday. He got your order. He heard your prayer. Your order is being processed. God sent me to tell somebody the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much touch your neighbor tell a neighbor God is processing every order he's dealing with every request I gotta go Woo. but the second text I got said your package is out for delivery Slap your neighbor, say, hey neighbor, it's in the neighborhood, it's getting real close to your house, it's already loaded up in the bus, the man with the brown suit on is getting ready to drive up in your driveway, tell him your, your blessing is out for delivery, your answer is out for delivery, it's already on the truck, the devil can't stop it, you're about to be blessed, good measure, press down. Shaking the book I'm going home. I'm going home. But before I go to the car, I got one more text. And the last text said, Your package has been delivered. Slap somebody, tell a neighbor. Ooh, tell them on this Christmas Sunday say hey neighbor your package has been delivered you say pastor I haven't got it yet God told me to tell you to get home it's sitting on the front porch it's already been delivered God's about to hook you up goodness and mercy are getting ready to be opened up in your life touch somebody tell a neighbor we're stepping into a blessing we're not leaving 21 limping we're coming out with joy we're coming out in strength we're coming out in blessing god's about to deliver your children god's about to deliver your marriage it's delivered it's already done it's done it's 
stand with me. I'm through preaching. It's through. It's through Jesus. 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 Mary's baby. Jesus. Lily of the valley. Jesus. Bright and morning star. Jesus. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Jesus. And his name shall be called Wonderful. I want to tell you my Mr. Wonderful is not in Dallas, Texas. My Mr. Wonderful is not in Orlando, Florida. My Mr. Wonderful was born 2,000 years ago in a manger in Bethlehem. Isaiah said, his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, and the gov- the increase of his government shall know no end. Today, you and I didn't start generosity. He started it. He started it when he took the greatest gift heaven ever had, wrapped it in the suit of flesh. That's why all the packages under your tree have to be unwrapped. He'll hide it. He'll conceal it. And the seeker comes looking for it. And when it finds him, It looks past the wrapping, takes the wrapping off because it knows there's a a gift underneath that package of wrapping. I was reading over there this week about the three wise men. We say three, there could have been 70. We don't know how many there were, but we know they were kings. And they came to Herod. And when they came to Herod, Herod said, tell me, watch this. Tell me where this king is. Herod said, I want to go worship him for myself. And the Lord whispered to me and said, be careful. Don't hang around anybody that won't go seek Jesus for themselves. He said, you tell me where you find him. See, he wanted the kings from the east, the wise men, to go find him for himself. But Herod should have went looking for Jesus for his own life. Be careful that you don't hang around people who don't want to go seek for Jesus. How many want to go seek him for yourself? Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and just worship him? I feel like somebody needs to unpack, unwrap the delivery today. Lord, somebody needs peace in their mind. Let them unwrap Jesus today. Somebody needs healing in their body. Let them unwrap Jesus today. Some family needs the strength of God to rise up. Let them unwrap Jesus today. Hey family, while your faith is high and while God is speaking to you through this message today, I wanted to end this time together by saying a prayer for you and agreeing with you in prayer that God is gonna meet you right where you are at the point of your need. As we pray, I want you to remember this, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. You don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God. And today we're going to agree in prayer together for your healing, for your deliverance, for the miracle, for the blessing that you've been waiting on. I believe it's time to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the people of God who are watching today. Thank you for everyone who has tuned in to this this message and this broadcast. And we are agreeing in prayer right now that every need they have, you are going to supply it. Father, I reach out to you in faith and I pray for the person who is lost that you would save them. For the person who is sick that you would bring healing right now to their body. Father, for the person who needs a miracle financially, a miracle in their home, a miracle in their marriage, there's nothing too hard for you. And in Jesus' name, we speak to that issue. We command those mountains to be moved and we thank you in advance for your blessing that's coming up on their lives today. In Jesus' name, we receive it. Amen. Friend, I can't wait to be with you next week. 
I'm going to keep praying for you until then. God bless you, spread the news, and we'll see you soon. Go in peace.